What does the Bible say about the rapture? What is it exactly? Well, the word rapture does not exist in the Bible, but it does talk about it. Let me explain. The word rapture comes from the words caught up. It comes from the Greek word harpazo. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 says, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up. Greek word harpazo together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So the rapture basically means that we, Christians, true believers, will be caught up in the air to meet Jesus in the clouds. Now please don't confuse this with the second coming of Jesus. This is the rapture before Jesus comes to earth a second time. If He comes the second time, He won't meet us in the air. He will stand on the Mount of Olives and bring judgment. Zechariah 14 verse 3, Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when He fights on a day of battle. On that day, His feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. So, what exactly is the rapture? What will happen at the rapture? Well, let's take a look at Scripture and let's see what the Bible says about it. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 Behold, I tell you a mystery. This is not a secret, it's a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This means instantly, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. It will happen in a twinkling of an eye. That means instantly. So, if you are still alive, when Jesus comes to meet us in the clouds and this happens, you won't die. Your physical body will just change instantly into an eternal body. The rapture is not a long process. It will happen instantly. And suddenly, Christians everywhere, gone. A lot of people will know that it was God. And some people, strange theories will come. They will say, no, it was aliens that abducted people. But it will be Jesus coming to get His children, meeting us in the clouds. 1 Thessalonians 4 For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Wow, just imagine it. Jesus Himself coming, meeting us in the clouds, calling us to be where He is. But now... There's a question. Why does Jesus come and get us, the rapture, before His second coming? You see, this is where it gets really interesting. It's because of the tribulation. The tribulation is a time so awful, nothing before it or after it can even compare. Jesus Himself says in Matthew 24 verse 21, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. Now this will be a terrible, terrible time for the nation of Israel and for the whole world. The tribulation. But just before it happens, Jesus will come to get His children. He will call us with Him, Harpazo, meeting Him in the air, to be with Him where He is. Why? Because He doesn't want us to go through the tribulation, through all that pain. Jesus is preparing a place for us right now. And when He is ready, He will come and get us to be where He is. This is the rapture. Then, when He comes the second time to earth, He will bring judgment 
on this sinful world. But right now, we still have time. We have to share the gospel to the ends of the world. Why? Because we are the ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making His appeal through us. I want you to see the bigger picture here. This world is not our home. We are only passing through. We are ambassadors for Christ, sharing the gospel. We are ambassadors in another country, in another world. And there is a huge spiritual war going on behind the scenes. And we are right in it. And at the end, God Himself will come and He will bring His judgment on this sinful fallen world. But before that happens, He will bring His ambassadors home. That is the rapture. The day you became a Christian, you became a citizen of heaven. That is your real home. And at the rapture, God is just bringing you home because He doesn't want you to go through the tribulation. Just a few verses later in chapter 5, it says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Verse 4, But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. And now, listen to verse 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. God's wrath is not for you. God's wrath is for the unbelievers, those who willfully chose the darkness instead of the light. The time of the tribulation is a time where God Himself will pour His wrath on this sinful world, on all unrighteousness. You can read all about it in the book of Revelation. But Scripture is clear that His wrath is not meant for His children. Now listen to this, Revelation 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. So here God promises that He will protect His children from the hour of trial that will come on the whole world. This is the tribulation. The Greek word that's used here is ak, which means out of. Now, He's not just saying, I will keep you from the trial. He is saying, I will keep you from the hour of the trial. This means the whole time of the tribulation. Now, a lot of people don't understand the, the whole timeline, uh, what will exactly happen in the end times. Let me quickly explain it to you in a simple way. First, Jesus comes down from heaven to take us with Him at the rapture. Second, Jesus brings down His judgment on the earth, the time of the tribulation. Third, Jesus is victorious and we rule over the world for 1,000 years with Him, while the devil is sealed in the pit. Number four, the devil will be released and he will have a final war against God. Number five, God deals with the devil a final time. He throws him in the lake of fire for all eternity to be tormented. Six, the great final judgment will take place. And lastly, number seven, we will live with God forever as His children in the new earth and the new heaven. Are you ready for all of this? I sure am. I can't wait to meet Jesus and also to see my father, my all my grandparents, my, my two brothers. Are you ready? The rapture is just the start. If you are a real child of God, you won't be afraid. You will actually look forward to it with a smile, with a, with a joy in your heart. And if you are not a real child of God, if you're uncertain that you are saved, then please watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you, and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you.